Hey guys, Eric here. Welcome to Rant Review. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Acolyte finale episode and the entire season. It's like a season overview. We're going to talk about all of that here. I'm going to get my thoughts on how they wrapped up this first season because yes, it looks like they're setting up for a season two. So we're going to talk about all that in this video. So careful for spoilers if you didn't watch the finale episode for the Acolyte. With that being said, Let's get into it. So although I did enjoy this season, it had its ups and downs. We talked about it and all the reviews have been watching my reviews for the season. You will know that I've been very critical of some of the elements of the show, but I have also enjoyed it because at the end of the day, I want to be entertained. You want to be entertained. And that's really what these shows are about. And for me, it did tick the boxes for that, even with some of the weaker episodes in the season. So it's a mixed bag. This finale is a mixed bag for me. And I have some criticisms based on the narrative of the entire season, as well as the episode itself. But let's start off with some of the stuff that I really enjoyed. And that was the stunt choreography, the fight choreography. All of that was top notch in this episode. And I expected that because it's been like that the entire season. I know there's been videos of people trying to clown the show for how realistic it is. But at the end of the day, I don't care about how realistic Space Wizards fighting with laser swords is comparison to like medieval knights. I don't care about that. I want to be entertained by this. The stuff they're doing is stuff that people can't do anyway. So when it comes to the sword fighting, I want to enjoy it. I want to watch it and be wowed. That's why you watch stuff like this. You watch superhero movies, you watch sci-fi, you watch fantasy. You do that because you know it's going to do things that people do not do in real life. And therefore, for me, I don't care if the stunt choreography is exactly the same as it would have been when King Arthur was fighting or whatever the hell you want to try and judge it by. I liked it. I thought it was good. It's supposed to be like a dance. That is what these things are. Most sword battles in real life would not last 5, 10, 15 minutes. It just would not. And so for these shows, they have to draw it out and make it work and make it entertaining. And for me, it ticked all those boxes. So shout out to all of the stunt people, stunt choreographers, everybody involved with this series. Just absolutely amazing work in this finale episode, especially in the daylight. If you're filming stuff with special effects and stunt choreography in, in broad daylight, you know that they are very confident in their work because we've watched a lot of TV shows over here. And I could tell you a lot of times when people are kind of shaky, about their stunt work, you're going to see it in like a darkly lit area or it's going to be at nighttime or there's going to be some weird reason why you can't see everything. And this show, they have done it at nighttime. They've done it in shade. They've done it in daylight. They are very confident with their stunt work. And they should be. I thought it was very good, uh, especially the battle between Saul and Kamir. This fight scene here was incredible. I love the way this went down. I love the usage of the force here, how Kamir's overconfidence was used against him by Saul because Saul was very confident not overconfident, but very confident that he could do what he needed to do to defeat Kamir. And so here in this scene, you see confidence versus overconfidence and compensation. And these uh, evil characters in movies and TV shows, uh, these misguided characters who always go out of their way to come after and go after other people, thinking they can just easily beat them. And even though we've seen Kamir do a lot of incredible stuff this season, this battle alone was worth the price of admission. I loved this portion of the episode. And this in juxtaposition with the battles between osha and may that was happening on the other side of the facility i thought worked beautifully the editing was really good uh typically in these types of fights the editing has been very slick and concise and well done uh outside of the pacing and the progress of the series which has been one of my complaints over time but just in general this battle here alone for me just really blew me away. And so again, this was, it's been one of the best parts of the entire series is the stunt choreography. And uh, in this episode, it didn't let us down whatsoever. All right. So let's talk a little bit about May and Osha in this episode and their journey throughout the entire season. So there's been parallels between these two characters and Luke and Leia, everything coming down to like deaths in the family, the characters that were killed off, the turns to the dark side, all of these things sort of play together between these sets of characters. My issue with this episode when it comes to May and Osha is although I think they had some great scenes together and the emotional stuff between the two of them being like this, a singular being split into two separate bodies, um, I thought all that was really cool. I also thought it was interesting that they finally kind of understand that they were created by the force and then split into two human bodies. And we get a little bit of that. And that was another criticism I have is I wanted to see more of that this season, because that was one of the mysteries that I felt like we deserved as viewers, some sort of a payoff on because it was the mystery that we've been dealing with the whole season. Now it's being used to tease season two between these two characters, the, like what they are, who they are, how this all works in the larger star Wars landscape. And I understand 
that they want to do a season two. But to be honest, I just didn't feel satisfied with this. And let's talk about the the heel turns with these characters. This kind of came out of nowhere for me because as we were watching the series, I felt like Osha was pushing back against Kamir. And even though she put on the helmet and started to sort of feel the vibes of the dark side, I still felt like this was a character who was inherently good. And I had kind of convinced myself that that's, that's what they were doing with this character. That was the dichotomy with her and May was that this was a character who was going to be the light side and all of this other stuff. And they kind of went very, I don't know, textbook with like this idea that the characters switch positions in the series and you have may who starts to see things differently and then osha goes backwards and turns to the dark side i don't know it felt a little bit too like textbook star wars to me um so i didn't really appreciate that and i thought that was kind of a bad change for a character i think they could have done something more interesting that's my personal opinion although i do understand why she flipped out when she found out about what saul did um, and the fact that I knew we, we were saying this as we were watching the episode that the majority of these characters are either going to go away forever or they're going to be killed off because in order for them to explain why the Sith have been missing for so long, you can't have a lot of loose ends. The, the smallest amount of loose ends as possible is ideal in that situation. So I knew that there was a big possibility that he wasn't going to make it. And then we see that at the end of the episode, uh, Kamir and uh osha are back on the planet here they're going to train i guess and she's going to become part of the dark side and we get a little tease i believe people have been saying it's going to be darth plagueis um i haven't read any interviews that confirm that yet but it seems like it's the most likely scenario that you see him like creeping out and peeking from inside the cave uh watching them the rule of three the sith all of that so i think that's kind of what they're they're playing towards here but for me personally we kind of for lack of better terms here, um, we're back where we started. Like the characters at the beginning of the season was like May was out there doing awful things uh, in the name of the dark side as revenge for what happened with the witch coven. Uh, Kamir is training her and, and all of that. And so she's doing all these things and like we're following along with Osha, the character that is obviously the light side character. Uh, and here we are at the end of the season, and now Osha is following the same path that May was, and now May is probably going to follow the same path as Osha with Vernestra and the Jedi Council. So it feels like we're just kind of back where we started from in the series. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if I really appreciate that. I feel like this was a letdown in the story for me, and I wanted a little bit more from these characters. And maybe it's not such a big deal to you, but it's kind of a big deal to me. And I really hope that if we get a season two, because I, I think we probably will, if we get a season two, they do their best to really focus in on explaining some of the details of these stories that I think a lot of us want the answers to. And I told you guys all through the season as I was reviewing this, that when we get to the end of the season, I'm going to be hard on it. I'm going to let people know what I think about it, because at the end of the season, you should feel satisfied as a viewer and everything is fair game. And for me, this was one of the weaker elements going back to this. Now, you might disagree with me and I would love to know why. So let me know in the comments below. Now, the bleeding of the crystal was something that I thought was really interesting, seeing how the Sith saber happens. We got to see that in this episode when uh, Osha picked up Saul's lightsaber and turned it into a red saber. And we each, we actually saw that in live action. Now, I don't know. I'm trying to think back um, in all of the Star Wars shows and movies we watch. I don't think we've seen this in a live action property. Now, there might be a cartoon randomly somewhere where they've covered this or in the expanded universe, the stuff that may not be lore anymore. But um, I don't think I've seen this before. And I thought it was really cool to see it in action and watching Kamir's reaction to it when um, Osha does this. So I thought this was excellent. I, I like this kind of stuff, like this scene, the framing of the scene, this shot in particular, very well done. Also, it was kind of a shock to me to see Martian Manhunter in the episode. Uh, when he walked in, I immediately knew who it was. I like they, they hadn't even gotten a close up of his face. Like I could tell it was him. I was like, was he announced to be in this? And I missed that. Did I cover it and forget about it? I completely forgot. Anyway, it was, it was nice seeing him um, on the show. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is the big question of the season from a lot of the people who were talking negatively about the show. They went on and on about this, and I'm glad they finally answered it. Uh, this was a satisfying answer for as a viewer, and so I'm happy they did it. This is one of the things I think they got right, and that was explaining how the Jedi were going to cover up what was happening in the series 
so that it doesn't have a conflict with the prequels and the information that the Jedi Council had. And there's a big like cameo teaser at the end as well. So Vernestra, who has been kind of shady the whole season, I called this out like in episode three or four. I was like, there's definitely something shady about her. We find out that she was the master for Kamir and that his he was trained by her. So that puts all that together. So great question answered. Glad we got the final book in on that one. Um, how that's going to play out in season two, it's yet to be seen. Uh, also, we sh- we see how she covers all of this up. She basically throws Saul under the bus to cover up everything that happened, um, with you know making it seem like he offed himself um, because there was no lightsaber, you know, stabbing through him or anything like that. So she could easily get away with telling them that and tricking and fooling a lot of the people that work under her. And they did a really good job of showing just how incompetent the the Jedi that work under her are and i know a lot of people were upset about that but if you look at it and you see how they function as an extension of vernestra you can see that they are just not going to pick up on any of this stuff they're just not it's not going to happen so that's what that's what it is she went out of her way to cover all of this up and for me that sort of explains why none of those other jedi knew about what was going on and Seems like she did a pretty good job of it. Now, there may be a wrench thrown in the gears of that when we get into season two. We don't know yet because we have no idea if we're even getting a season two. But we get a cameo at the end of Yoda as she walks in and we see the back of his head. And I thought this was a cool teaser. Um, You know, maybe we'll get Yoda in season two. Clearly, there's some sort of stuff that's going to be happening here, some sort of dialogue. I don't know if it's just like an off-screen thing where we'll pick up with like the first episode and she's like, I talked to Master Yoda, blah, blah, blah. And then we never see him again. Or if he's going to be a big part of season two. I don't know. We have no idea. But there's already people out there saying that Yoda would have known better, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Have we not learned our lesson? Have we not learned our lesson from this season? Wait until the season is done to determine if you like or dislike any twists or turns in it. For me, her covering up this uh, whole situation with the Jedi Council makes sense based on the information we've been given. We have no idea what her interactions with Yoda are going to be like. We don't know because we haven't seen it yet. But they're teasing it here. So we will get there. But I think we should wait until we get there before we start getting upset and mad about it. But I think that's asking too much about the community when it comes to stuff like this because it just seems like everybody wants to sort of, uh, you know, blow their top when it comes to all of this. Overall, I had a good time watching this season of The Acolyte. I think the show was a lot of fun. It's one of the few shows that we kind of set around counting down the clock to when the episodes were released. And it's because we were just enjoying it. We were entertained. And yes, there were ups and downs. There were episodes that were not good. There were storylines that weren't that great. But overall, I think the good outweighs the bad for me. Each week I turned in, ex- each week I tuned in expecting the best. And if I didn't get the best, then that's what it is. <clears throat> Each week I tuned in expecting to be entertained. I wasn't looking for perfection. I was just looking to be entertained. And more times than not with The Acolyte, I was. And so I'm going to give this finale episode an 8 out of 10. There is a lot of stuff left on the table, but they're setting up a season 2. Now, if there was no season 2 in sight and they were trying to wrap up everything they could in this season, in this one episode then I would probably give it a lower score because I think there are some things that I would have liked to have seen, like more information on May and Osha, a little bit more characterization of why they made the decisions they made. I think that would have been really strong, but maybe we will explore that in season two. I don't know, and since they left that open-ended, I can't outright just go, I'm going to give it an awful score because of that. Because we don't know. The story is obviously continuing. Now, if we never get another season of this, I might revisit this and be like, they should have done more, but they wouldn't have known that when they were writing this because they are vying for a second season. So for me, as an episode of TV... I think I was entertained enough to give it an 8 out of 10. It definitely wasn't a 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 for me, but it was a strong 8 out of 10. And um, I hope in the second season they correct some of the issues I had. The big one is pacing of episodes and where episodes are placed within the season. I did not enjoy that most of the time this season. I thought there was a lot of missteps when it comes to that. And I know people are going to have different opinions when, you know, when, when it comes to how you're viewing the shows. But I think when you're watching something that isn't part of a binge model, you need to be very different about the way you approach the episode release schedule the pacing all of that stuff so for me i i hope they course correct that in season two everything else i think is fine oh yeah and and please don't bring the child act actors back for season
season two. Do not. That was like my least favorite part of the of the storyline. The season was the child acting. It just wasn't very good for me. But everybody else, I think, did a really solid job. Shout out to Saul. Uh, shout out to Vernestra. Shout out just pretty much everybody. Everybody on the show. All the characters in the show, I think, were very very strong. Uh, anyway, that's my thoughts and opinions. That's my score. We'll talk more about this on the live stream this weekend, where we're going to go through a lot of details of the season. We'll have more people up here chatting with me. And if you have any questions that you'd like for us to answer during that, uh, please leave it in the comments below. That's pretty much it. I'm out of here. Have a great day, and I will see you guys later.